welcome to the Stay Home Sofa series presented by the Bridge Arts Festival. Uh, this is a series that we have every Thursday at 6.30 and we feature quality arts entertainment. So today we're excited to host um, our very young audience um, for our little creatives and we have Storybook Theater. And I was so excited with butterflies in my stomach that they actually came out into my hair today. So this uh, Stay Home Sofa series is presented in part with our partnership with BCB Bank, um, with the Hudson County Cultural Affairs Office, and of course, the Bridge Arts Festival. So we're excited to host at Storytime Theater, and uh, today we're welcoming Tempest Productions. So let's begin with the show. Hi everyone, I'm Miss Lisa and I am from Tempest Productions and today we are going to be actors and we are going on a lion hunt. I hope you're ready to run. I hope you're ready to scream and make noise and do a lot of crazy stuff, but I hope most of all, you're ready to be good listeners because good actors are good listeners. And we're gonna be using our imagination on this uh, lion hunt. So, like I said, you are going to be running and crawling and doing a lot of crazy things, but when you hear my bell, that means it is time to freeze. So let's play with that a little bit, okay? So, we're going to make believe First thing that we're going to make believe is that without running all around the house, you are going to just run in place. Can you run in place? Can you run in place? Oh, make believe you're running away from something. That's really, really scary. Oh, run, 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 run. Ah. Good job freezing. Hmm, next. Let's pretend, let's use our imagination to make believe we're swimming. Oh, because it is a hot day, we're swimming. Everyone in the pool, swimming, or in the river, or in the beach, wherever you wanna be. You can imagine anything you want and you can move forward. You can swim forward, or you can swim back, or you can doggy paddle. Whatever it is you wanna do and Breathe. Good job. How about climbing? Let's climb. Maybe we're climbing a rope or climbing a tree or climbing up a very big mountain or a wall. We're climbing, 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 and good job. Breathe. You guys are good listeners. Hmm. Let's do a couple more. Let's do walking in space. Oh, in space, you can't really go fast because there's no oxygen. You kind of have to go slow, very, very slow. It's almost like being full of hot air, or like the balloons in the parade. You kind of, you think they don't go very fast. Oh. Good job. Now, last one. We are going to imagine, make believe that we are on a tightrope, a thousand feet up in the air. So be brave, because we need to be brave for our story. You are going to put your arms out and you're going to take steps one in front of the other and make sure you're not looking down or and you don't fall down because I think Oh, yeah, yeah, I just looked down and there's a very, very hungry alligator down there. And I don't think he ate breakfast this morning or lunch. So don't fall, don't fall. Keep walking, keep walking. Ah, you guys are great listeners. Now, now that we've gotten warmed up a little bit, let's Let's act like some animals because I mean, our story is about animals. So we have to get our imagination even more going. Um, but this time, you're not just gonna walk. 
you are going to be making the noise that the animal makes, okay? So first animal, and remember, when, I, when you hear the bell, you freeze. So first animal is a dog. How does a dog walk? Maybe it's running. <laughs> Maybe it's scratching its ear. Maybe it's just making noises like woof, woof, woof. I know my dog barks all the time. Woof, woof, woof. Everybody, woof, 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 woof. <laughs> Good. How about a cat? Oh, sometimes cats can, oh, they can, they can run around fast or they can be very lazy and they can, my cat likes to clean herself all the time too. And sometimes she makes noise. What sound does the cat make? Yeah. Meow. Meow. What other sounds do the cats make? Yep. Yeah. Purr. Oh, purr. Freeze, good job. Now, we are going to make believe we're birds. Can you make believe you're a bird and you're flying, flying high above everything? Can you make the bird sounds? Any sound, there's a lot of different kinds of birds. There's birds that tweet, 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 tweet. There's birds that go cuckoo. Make your bird sound. Let's go. Oh, I am hearing some wonderful bird sounds out there. Keep going. Keep going. And good. I got one. Monkey. Can you all be my little monkeys for me? Can you walk around like a monkey? And make the monkey noises. Any noise you want that a monkey makes. job. Oh, this might be a little tough one, but I think you can do it. Giraffe. Gi giraffes have really long necks, but our necks are not very long. So I guess maybe we can use our hands. Maybe our hands can be the neck. Like our arms are the, are the neck and then our hands are, are the, the head. And giraffes have long feet. So you can take long, long steps, long steps, but they're very quiet. But you can go to a tree and make believe you're munching on the tree. Good. I got one more. Lion. I mean, we are going on a lion hunt, so how would a lion act? How would your lion act? Would he roar? roar would he be running? Or would he just be lumbering in the sun like, oh. how would your lion sound? <gasps> Ooh, that's a very scary lion. <laughs> That's a good one. All right. Good job. Now, we walked around and we made noises. Now we're going to be statues. That means we are not going to walk around and we are not going to make a noise. I'm going to see who knows. I'm going to give you a clue what a, of what a statue is. You might know this statue. It looks kind of like this. What statue do you think that is? She holds a book in her hand like this and a torch. Yeah, the Statue of Liberty. And the Statue of Liberty doesn't move. She doesn't say anything. So we're going to be statues. So in this, in this time, you are going to be an animal, but you're not going to give me all the noises and all the movement. You're just going to give me the pose of the animal. For example, so if when I say bird, you're gonna you're gonna do whatever you think a bird looks like. Good job. Try one more statue. Cat. Good. 
good. How about monkey? <laughs> good job. Well, if you think you're just going to do this all in English, then I'm sorry, my friend. I have something to tell you. We're going to learn some Spanish. Okay? And some of you might already know Spanish, and that's awesome. So we're just going to have to um, go over our Spanish then, and that's the, if that's the case. First thing I'm going to have to uh, show you, these are your, in English, they're called eyes. Yeah. In Spanish, ojos. Can you repeat after me? Ojos. One more time. Ojos. Good. This is your nose, but in Spanish it's called nariz. Nariz. Good, because when we meet that lion, we might not see him right away, but we may maybe touch his ojos or his nariz. And this is called it your, yep, your mouth in English, but in Spanish it's boca. Repeat it after me, boca. One more time, boca. And in your boca, you have dientes. Dientes. One more time. Dientes. Good job. You guys are really, really good at this. In our story, we're going to see some things too, but I'm not going to tell you what they are in English in the story, or maybe I will. But I'm going to tell you what they are in Spanish. We are going to see some, oh, mud. Maybe go through some mud. And in Spanish, it's called lodo. Can everyone say that? Lodo. Mud, again, is lodo. Good job. Then we have sticks or palos. Palos. And trees, árboles. 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 Good job. And river is rio, rio. And last but not least, we have a lot of grass where we're going. Or hierba, hierba. One more time. What is it? Hierba. Good. So like I said, our story now that we have our imaginations warmed up and our bodies warmed up and we know some Spanish words to go with our story and we have got our listening bell, our freezing bell, we are going to go and start our story. We are going on a lion hunt. <gasps> but silly me, I forgot one very important thing. If we go on our lion hunt, we need our sombrero. So. Before we put on or we do anything, put on your, if you have a sombrero, a hat, I need you to put it on. Or if you don't have one, it's okay. We're using our imagination. So you can just put on your imaginary sombrero. You ha Everyone have their sombrero? <laughs> Good job. All right. So we're going on a lion hunt. <gasps> Where do you think these kids are? Are they already out in the desert or in a jungle? Where do you think they are? You're right. They're at school. What gave that away? Right. Well, you have the teacher and you have the alphabet right on top lets you know that they're they're in their classroom. Oh, and of course, they're all at their desks. And the teacher is telling them a story. We did say we were going to be actors today, didn't we? Well, guess what? You're going to have some lines. The teacher is going to say, we're going on a lion hunt. And then you're going to say, we're going to catch a big one. 
What are you going to say? Repeat after me. We're going to catch a big one. We're not afraid. We're not afraid. Good. And you'll get it because we'll be doing it a, a little bit, okay? So, ladies and gentlemen, get ready. We are going on a lion hunt. So put on your safari hats. It's time to use your imagination. <gasps> and look, they're leaving. They're leaving the school. Their imaginations are already working. So are you ready? We're going on a lion hunt. We're going to catch a big one. We're not afraid. <gasps> Mira, look. Look what's up ahead. What do you think is up ahead? It's lava. Oh, you can't go over it. You can't go under it. You can't go around it. I guess we have to go through it. So make believe you're walking in all this lava, all this mud. Pick up your feet. Oh, it's sticky. It's sticky. Oh, my feet are. I think I lost my shoe. We're going on a lion hunt. And you guys say, we're going to catch a big one. We're going to catch a big one. We're not afraid. Good job. <gasps> Look, Mira, what's up ahead? What's this? Palos, it sticks. We can't go over it. We can't go under it. We can't go around it. <gasps> I guess we have to go through it. So let's make believe we're walking through all those sticks. Oh, 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 they're scratching, scratching because they're very, very pointy. Oh, it's walking through all those sticks. Look, Mira, what's up ahead? We're going on a lion hunt. We're, that's right. We're going to catch a big one. Are you afraid? We're not afraid. Mira, what's up ahead? It's arboles. Look at all these trees. We can't go over them. We can't go under them. We can't go around them. I guess we're going to have to. What are they doing? Climb. So everyone climb, climb, climb up that tree. It's a really, really tall tree. Oh, 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 make sure you don't fall because we're going on a lion hunt and we're gonna catch a big one. We're not afraid. <gasps> Mira, what's up ahead? Esto es un Rio, it's the river. Everyone, swim, swim, because we can't go over it. We can't go under it. We can't go around it. We have to slosh through it. So swim, swim, swim. Keep swimming, keep swimming, keep swimming, because we're going on a lion hunt. And we're going to catch a big one. Good job. Oh, we are not afraid, are we? Mm -mm. Look, what's up ahead? Yerba. It's the grass. And it's really, really tall. So we're going to have to try to get through it. Oh, it's bigger than I am. Oh, go around it. Oh, because we can't go through it. I mean, we can't go over it. We can't go under it. We have to go through it. So make sure you're pushing through that grass, pushing through that grass, because we're going on a lion hunt. You guessed it. And are we going to catch a small one? A big one. Are you afraid? No, nope, we're not afraid. Uh-oh. What's that? That's a cave. We can't go over it. We can't go under it. 
You can't go around it. I guess we're going to have to go through it. We're not afraid, are we? I, I, no, I'm not afraid of a little dark cave, I guess. Ooh. It's dark in here. I see two shining lights. What do you think those lights are? What do you think those lights are? Oh, they're oh, 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 I feel something furry. What, what, what could that be? That's nutties. Oh no. And, and sharp, sharp. Dientes. Oh my goodness. I think it's time that we run out of the cave. It's the lion. We found him. Run. Run. We're going to run back and we're going to run through all the things that we just did. So we have some grass. So you're swishing through the grass. Swishing through the grass, and now you're swimming across the river. Swim, everybody, swim, swim, swim faster. I think he's gaining on us. Swim, oh, the trees. We're gonna have to climb those trees. Climb, 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 climb. Now jump through the sticks, jump through the sticks, jump, 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 jump. Oh my goodness, oh, oh my goodness. Oh, there's the lodo, there's the mud. We're gonna have to go through all that mud. Oh, I, my mom's gonna get so mad at me. We're gonna run into the school. And we're going to be safe at last. Okay. That was our story. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Thank you guys for going on this lion hunt with me. I really appreciate it. And um, I hope to see you next time. Wasn't that a great story? I loved that. So we have another story for you guys today. It's called Blueberries for Sal by Robert McCluskey. So I need your help real fast before we start the story. What is your favorite fruit to eat in the summer? That's awesome. I like those too. Mine is blueberries, just like the story. I'm gonna need your help. We have to catch and get a lot of blueberries. Do you know how you get blueberries? That's right, you pick them. So we're gonna put on our imagination hats again. Everybody's got them? Good. Grab your pail and let's practice picking some blueberries so we can help Sal. To go over there, drop them in, take another and drop them in. What sound do you think blueberries make when they hit a pile? We're gonna find out in this story those are some really good answers. Are you guys ready? All right, here we go. One day, little Sal went with her mother to Blueberry Hill to pick blueberries. Little Sal brought along her small tin pail and her mother brought her large tin pail to put berries in. We will take our berries home and can them, said her mother. Then we will have our food for the winter. Can we practice catching some berries? Mom and dad, you can join in too. Plop them in your little pails. Great. Little Sal picked three berries and dropped them in her little tin pail. Kerplink, kerplank, kerplunk. Can you guys say that? Kerplink, kerplank, kerplunk. Great. She picked three more berries and ate them. Let's pick some berries and eat them. Mm -hmm. Then she picked more berries and dropped one in the little pail. What sound do you think they made? Kerplunk. And the rest she ate. Then little Sal 
ate all four blueberries out of her pail. Is that how you get blueberries? Do you eat them out of the pail? Or do you bring them home? Her mother walked slowly through the bushes, picking blueberries as she went and putting them in her pail. Little Sal struggled along behind, picking blueberries and eating every single one. Let's walk up Blueberry Hill, Let's keep putting berries in our bin. Let's eat some. Little Sal hurried ahead and dropped a blueberry in her mother's pail. What sound do you think it made? It didn't sound kaplunk because the bottom of the pail was already covered with berries. She reached down inside to get her berry back. Though she really didn't mean to, she pulled out a large handful because there were so many blueberries up close to the one she dropped in. Let's see those blueberries. Her mother stopped picking and said, now Sal, you run along and pick your own berries. Mother wants to take her berries home and can them for next winter. Her mother went back to her picking, but little Sal, because her feet were tired of standing and walking, sat down in the middle of a large clump of bushes and ate blueberries. Let's plop down. Let's reach around and eat some blueberries as far as you can reach. How far can you go to get your blueberries? Mm. On the other side of Blueberry Hill, Little Bear came with his mother to eat blueberries. Little Bear, she said, eat lots of berries and grow big and fat. We must store up food for the long, cold winter. Can we walk like a bear? How do bears walk? Yeah, they kind of trudge. And then how do they eat berries? Do they eat them with their hands? No. You're right, they eat them with their mouth. Um, let's eat some berries like bears. Little Bear followed behind his mother as she walked slowly through the bushes eating blueberries. Little Bear stopped now and then to eat berries. Then he had to hustle along to catch up. Let's run after mom, like a bear. Because his feet were tired of hustling, he picked a large clump of berries, sat down, and began to eat all the blueberries. He's a tired bear. Who else is tired and sitting down? You're right, Sal is. On the other side of the hill, little Sal ate all of the berries she could reach from where she was sitting. Then she started off to find her mother. Do you see her mother? Where do you think she is? Let's go see if you're right. She heard a noise from around a rock and thought, that is my mother walking along. Do you think mom is behind the rock? Let's go look. But it was a mother crow and her children and they stopped eating berries and flew away, saying, ka, ka, ka. She then heard another noise in the bushes and thought, that must surely be my mother. I will go that way. Let's go with Sal, see what she can find. But it was little bear's mother instead. She was tramping along eating berries, thinking about storing up food for the winter. Little Sal tramped right along behind. But where's Little Bear? I don't see him. Let's go see where he is. By this time, Little Bear had eaten all of the berries he could reach without moving from his clump. Then he hustled off to catch up with his mother. He hunted and hunted but she was nowhere to be seen. He heard a noise from over a stump and thought, that is my mother walking along. Do you think that the mom is behind the stump? You think a big bear could fit behind that? 
I don't think so. Let's see. You're right. But it was a mother partridge and her children. They stopped eating berries and hurried away. Then he heard another noise in the bushes and thought, that is surely my mother. I will hustle that way. Let's hustle. Let's go find his mom. But it was little Sal's mother instead. She was walking along, picking berries and thinking about canning them for the winter. Little Bear hustled right along behind. Uh-oh. Is the bear supposed to be with the mom? Little Bear and little Sal's mother and little Sal and little Bear's mother were all mixed up with each other among the blueberries on Blueberry Hill. See? There's little Sal's mom and little Bear. There's little Sal and Mama Bear. They're in the wrong places. Do you think they'll find the right moms? I hope so. Little Bear's mother heard Sal walking along behind and thought it was Little Bear. And she said, Little Bear, munch, munch. Eat all the mm -hmm. you can possibly hold. Mm -hmm. Little Sal said nothing. She picked three berries and dropped them in her pail. What do you think they said? Kerplank, kerplank, kerplunk. Little Bear's mother turned around to see what on earth could make a sound like kerplunk. <gasps> she cried, choking on a mouthful of berries. This is not my child. Where is Little Bear? She took one good look and backed away. She was old enough to be shy of people, even a very small person like Little Sal. Then she turned around and walked off very fast to hunt for Little Bear. Can we walk really fast to go find Little Bear? <laughs> little Sal's mother heard Little Bear tramping along behind and thought it was Little Sal. She kept right on picking and thinking about canning blueberries for next winter. What do you think's gonna happen? Do you think she's gonna notice it's a bear? Oh boy. Little Bear padded up and peeked into her pail. Of course, he only wanted to taste a few blueberries, but there were so many and they were so close together that he tasted a tremendous mouthful by mistake. What does a tremendous mouthful look like? <sighs> nom, nom, yes. Now, Sal, said little Sal's mother, without turning around, you run along and pick your own berries. Mother wants to can these for next winter. Little Bear tasted another tremendous mouthful and almost spilled the entire pail of blueberries. Look at him in there, getting all those blueberries. Little Sal's mother turned around and gasped, my goodness, you are not Little Sal. Where, oh, where is my child? Little Bear just sat munching and munching and swallowing and licking his lips. Little Sal's mother slowly backed away. She was old enough to be shy of bears, even small little bears like Little Bear. Then she turned around and walked away quickly to look for Little Sal. Let's hustle, see if we can find the right people. She hadn't gone very far before she heard a kerplink, kerplank, kerplunk. She knew exactly what made that kind of noise. What makes that kind of noise? You're right, little Sal and her blueberries in her small tin pail. Little Bear's mother had not hunted for very long before she heard a hustling sound that stopped every now and then to munch and swallow. She knew exactly what made that kind of noise. It's a little bear. Little Bear and his mother went home down one side of Blueberry Hill, eating blueberries all the way 
and full of food stored up for the winter. And little Sal and her mother went down the other side of Blueberry Hill, picking berries all the way, and drove home with food to can for next winter. A whole pail of blueberries and three more of his sides. The end. Wasn't that a fantastic story? I thought so too. I hope you had fun with us today. We'll see you next time. Bye. Now, those were two really, really fun, exciting stories. And we have to thank Miss Ariane and Miss Lisa for sharing that with us. I hope you guys enjoyed Storybook Theater. If you would like, if your parents would like to find out more information about the programming from Tempest Productions, they can visit www.tempestproductions.org. Storybook Theater, uh, Tempest Productions Storybook Theater happens all over. And even though we have to stay away from each other and wear our masks, you can still enjoy their exciting story times online. So have a great weekend, everyone. I hope you all wear your mask when you go outside and still have fun, some fun in the sun by socially distancing. Thanks again, and we'll see you next week on the Bridge Arts Festival presents the Stay Home Sofa series. All right, bye-bye.